This episode of the On-Premise IT Roundtable is brought to you by Pure Storage. Welcome to the On-Premise IT Roundtable podcast, the only show that dares to be both on topic and on location. I'm your host, Stephen Foskett from Gestalt IT. Each time we meet, we bring together IT luminaries to discuss a single concept. In this episode, we're discussing Hadoop, or the death thereof. Before we get started, let's meet our panelists. Hi, my name is Arjan Timmerman, Tech Unplugged. You can find me on the web as at Arjan Tim or at Tech underscore Unplugged. Hi, my name is Chin Fa. I'm actually the owner and also a consultant with Katana Logic. I tweet at uh, Storage Gaga. Hi, I'm Kieran Sheldon. I'm a solutions engineer at Sixwise. Um, you can find me at Kieran underscore Sheldon or at readysetvirtual.com. And I'm Brian Gold with Pure Storage. I was one of the co-founders of our FlashBlade product line. So one of the things that uh, the industry has been talking about an awful lot is big data. And uh, that's uh, key to not just storage, but to the broader industry. Uh, you know, it's a data-driven world. And um, for the longest time, it seemed like Hadoop was where it's going to be at. You know, it seemed like that is the product that's going to rule the world and uh, everything was going to support that. But, uh, you know, there's some dissenting opinions there. So why don't we just start off, uh, Brian, if you want to just give us a, a bit of the, the, the counter narrative there. Why do you think uh, Hadoop might not end up ruling the world? Yeah, well, I mean, my view is definitely that big data and modern analytics is very real and very much alive. But if you look at the Hadoop stack, this large collection of myriad tools and technologies, it drowning under its own sort of complexity, and that particular set of choices is likely to uh, die off, just to be controversial. Aryan, do you agree? No, I don't. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> no, I think there's still a lot of customers that I'm with that are still, they either just invested in Hadoop, or they are still going to invest in Hadoop. Um, so for them, Hadoop isn't that, and it will not be that in the near future. So I still think there's a lot of Hadoop going on and um, yeah, it will be there for uh, the foreseeable future. And um, so that that's my vision on it. Well, I actually kind of agree with Brian because first of all, I think there's a lot of complexity in Hadoop, right? Um, and if you look at the properties of how you want to actually work with the data, uh, whether it's actually on premises or you know in the cloud and so on and so forth, um, you have to really understand where the data should be processed, right? And Hadoop doesn't actually help itself in you know both sides of the cloud and on-prem as well, all right? So I think that um, you know, given the the implosion, given the companies that has invested in Hadoop and now has pulled back, you know, people like Caldera and such, right? They have even changed their HCFS, they are map ready use, their yarn. So you know, even if somebody actually who started the Hadoop kind of movement has actually pulled back, you know, really is really telling me that Hadoop is really going away. I think there's more data that's being uh, created by these companies and they're starting to look at how are we going to store that data, where are we going to place it? And people are coming across and finding Hadoop now and starting to implement it. Like Ion said, is that it is, uh, there are companies now that are just implementing it. So I think it is not dead and it might be revived again. So it's a zombie, it's the, the <laughs> yeah. undead, I don't know. <laughs> well, just to, to play off that a bit, I, I certainly don't want to make it sound like the whole collection goes away, right? Mm -hmm. there, there's good technology that's been developed as part of this overall space. And so you'll see everything from data formats like Parquet and Orc that will absolutely live on. They're being used in lots and lots of you know, follow-on technologies. Uh, there are some of the scheduling logic and you know, frameworks that will live on. You see even AWS now building uh, you know, pretty high-scale data warehousing technologies on top of Hive and PrestoDB that they call uh, Athena that is essentially reusing technology that's come out of the Hadoop stack. So there's like an unbundling mm -hmm. that comes and about choosing sort of the right, the winners of that technology basically. Yes, but there's still the on-premises side of things. It's not like everything just goes into the cloud and, and, and will live there. There's still a lot of things going on on 
on-premises with the companies itself and they are implementing Hadoop. So there's still a lot of Hadoop going on. It might be that in multiple years that will shift a bit, but for now they're still doing it. So for me, Hadoop isn't that yet. Do you think it's going to be though? I mean, you say, you seem like you're you're kind of. But everything changes, right? Yeah. It's it's always it's always been like that. So there will be change, of course. But um, companies investing in it right now, they will be probably doing that for the next four to five years at least. So in that time, um, they're they are really focused on what they're doing to their data with Hadoop. After that, I don't know, I cannot see, um, I don't have that crystal ball yet. Yeah. I ordered it at AWS as well, but it's not in yet. Yeah, well that's, that's a service that they haven't yet introduced, maybe next year. Uh. Yeah, but I kind of disagree with that. Uh, first thing is, uh, it's always a complexity, right? When you're actually looking at data, it could be on the cloud, could be on-premises, in the data center. And if you look at edge computing, where does Hadoop stand, right? If you look at edge, Hadoop doesn't have that kind of simplicity that reaches out to the edge, right? And we have a lot of devices, you have a lot of machines, vehicles that's out there. Hadoop doesn't help, right, by processing the data well enough, all right, because it doesn't have the properties that is allowing it to, you know, reach out to the edge. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I find it that um, it's gonna be a bit difficult for Hadoop to continue on. Yeah, there's there's a piece that uh, I've observed, you know, working with a lot of, of clients that that's, you know, also moving beyond. There's an, a related topic here, which is moving beyond the concept of a data lake. So whether we, you know, agree or disagree that Hadoop, the set of technologies, one thing I feel strongly is, we've gotten way past the point where we just think of this. Hey, let's just dump data arbitrarily into this lake. You know, and the components that are really winning are, are blending streaming. So there's there's performance data, there's structure to it. You know, there's this revival of very high scale SQL data warehouses that's happening in this you know space of high scale machine data effectively. Um, and that is just sort of further pushing me to the belief that it really is about the simplicity of, of how do we create that set because there's some really hard pro technical problems solving fast and large data. Yeah, but we said the same thing about mainframes, right? And they're still there. Well, I, I think that maybe there's like a spectrum of longevity here, right? So there's like, you know, like mainframe applications, which is, you know, everybody said was dead and is living on and on and on and will probably continue for another hundred years, right? There's, um, you know, things like, I mean, remember when Linux was dead? You know, yep. and then and then, of course, that's not. And then, you know, oh, there's like Windows. There's, you know, these things that last for, for a long time, way longer than you expect them. And then there's shorter and shorter things. And, you know, it gets down to the point where um, you get to like these sort of ne next big things. Remember when um, when Ceph was going to take over the entire world or, um, you know, uh, you know, OpenStack or, you know, OpenStack Swift or something like that. I mean, you know, yeah. sometimes. You know, and then, you know, sorry to throw stones, Shinfa, and then you get things like CDMI that, mm -hmm. you know, kind of never really took, achieved yeah, the promise that they, that they had. Um, so on that spectrum of is dead, how dead is Hadoop? Is it CDMI dead or is it mainframe application dead? Well, the way I see it is, well... I, I kind of agree with what you said about CDMI. You know, it came out as a SNEER standard, and there's an ISO around it as well. But you know, and it looks great. But nobody's picking it up. That's the yeah. problem, right? That's the thing. But the Hadoop part is creating. Well, first of all, there's a lot of data. There's a lot of formats. There are a lot of specifications. There are a lot of interfaces. You know, and such and so on. We got to simplify that. If you look at the data itself, you know, you know, like what Brian just said, right? Put in the data lake. But the lake is becoming a swamp if you don't manage them, right? And the metadata part is equally as complex if you put it in Hadoop, right? And if we don't manage the metadata and start creating certain, you know, fundamental properties of the data, everything is going to get mixed up. And when you actually try to retrieve the data for whatever use that you want to use it, it's going to be very, very complex. And I don't think Hadoop is made for that. So how dead is it? It's pretty dead. Pretty dead. Pretty okay. dead. <laughs> uh, Aaron, how dead is it? Uh, I think I have to tend to agree. It is almost dead. You've changed my mind on that. There oh, might not be, I'm um, sorry. <laughs> there might not be a revival. It 
it might be a long, drawn out death, but it it will certainly die off. So it sounds like you're saying it's it's like OpenStack dead, which is to say <laughs> not dead, but not not dead. Yeah, we'll still be talking about it another five years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's still a lot of proponents about Hadoop and you know, yeah. like I say, OpenStack and, and so on, right? And a lot it's of companies fast. now that will that are looking into uh, implementing it will implement it, and then it'll be one of those ones where they say it's a bad investment, and it'll just die out for them, I think. But there are companies still finding it now and starting to implement it. All right, so we've got Stone dead, we've got OpenStack dead. What else we got? I, I think there will be a claim that it lives on. And for, for the reason that the technology, the, some of the good technologies, the you know, Apache Spark, Kafka, Parquet, these technologies are not going anywhere for any foreseeable future. Um, you know, mainframe is a high bar if you want, if that's your definition of longevity, which is a good one. Uh, I don't know that they would reach that point, but there will be a claim that hey, the the tools and technology live on. But I think the particular packaging of hey, you got to buy into this whole thing all at once as a suite. That's the part I feel passionately is is gone. I think it also comes down to what's more economical, whether it is to move away and out of Hadoop because it is dying off and into this newer, better technology or stay with it for next few years and, and it does live on for that reason. I, I agree with, uh, with Brian, I guess. It's, it's more on... on, on <laughs> we just kill it. Yeah, probably. <laughs> it it, it on, will die and then um, uh, some of the, of the good parts will be imp, in, implanted into, uh, but into a true, better right? thing. That's true. I mean, yeah. you see nowadays, right, Kafka is now re, rebranded and repackaged like a time series database. Right. Mm -hmm. It's totally different right now. Yeah. By so, the way, so are you saying like Docker dead then? In other words, totally not dead, but <laughs> <laughs> living on somewhere else yeah. <laughs> Un under a new name. Yep. Yeah. That's a pretty good, that's a good analogy. Hey, by the way, mainframes invented most of the technology that we've all used yes. at this point. Yes. So yes. even virtualization was, yeah. you know, invented yep. by mainframe, right? Yeah. Correct. That's Okay. I don't think that's a controversial premise for this group. Sorry. But, yeah. <laughs> I think on-premise IT just killed, uh, killed Hadoop. I think we did. Well, so, okay, so let's maybe take a second thought then. What parts live on? What parts of Hadoop do live on, even if it is Docker dead, OpenStack dead, or dead dead? So I, I would say one of the clear learnings that we've had as an industry from an infrastructure point of view is... The, the need to disaggregate compute from storage. That was something that made a lot of sense 15 years ago with one gig networks and you know, the need to sort of co-locate and have locality and all the optimizations that go with that. Mm -hmm. Modern networks are so fast that there's a flexibility. You look at how, this, how public clouds and other large private clouds are architected. It's not so much that lives on, it's that's clearly a learning coming out of this phase of Hadoop that the next iterations are gonna take forward. It's disaggregation at the compute storage layer, scale each independently and flexibly and on demand. Yeah, I, I think so. I think if you look at the need that it's, we are having right now, right, a lot of the data has to be real time, near real time. And, you know, a lot of demands from, you know, newer technologies and, you know, the mess that we see with data, the volume and so on and so forth. Something has to be simplified, something has to be made easier. And so what from Hadoop is going to help the, help us with that? I think pieces like, you know, Kafka, pieces, pieces like, you know, some of those uh, Spark and so on will, will, is going to help, all right, because uh, that's made for, you know, faster processing, faster response, lower latency and so on. So those pieces will, will be good, right? But things like MapReduce, things like um, HDFS, or even Yarn itself, all right, a lot of things are probably going to be buried under the rubble. Yeah, I was going to specifically ask, ask about HDFS. What do you guys, uh, I mean, are you, what, do you see HDFS living on? Uh, for a little while, probably, but um, in the end, I, I have to agree with those guys that it will probably uh, die and, um, and be gone. But um, yeah, then, then there needs to be new technology to pick that up um, and, and make sure that the people that are still using Kafka and other, other tools that uh, come from Hadoop, that that can continue. But um, yeah, I think that's, that's about it. Anybody else, HDFS? 
I got no love for HDFS. <laughs> um, you know, I think the, the cloud implementations and even things that are happening on-prem are proving out that object storage is the appropriate replacement mm -hmm. for what was HDFS. And it's a little more, there's a little more standard ecosystem around that, easier to build scalable tools, easier, easier to build a you know, healthy and uh, long-term stable environment around object as the right protocol for, mm -hmm. for big data. All right, I concur. Mm. So it's an X parrot. I mean, I, I certainly think the I mentioned it, the you know file structured file formats like Parquet and Orc and Avro are a clear winner coming out of the the broader ecosystem. One of the great things that those file formats have is that they're standards. They're well specified. You can go and that creates reuse. So that if you have a particular large machine data pipeline set up you're not locking that information up in some vendor's proprietary format. You can bring other tools to bear over time and create reuse of data in place without having to copy it out and transform it yet again if the right scheme really is, hey, it's structured data. And that's something that if you could peer inside the covers of large proprietary data warehouses, you'd see that there are at least a dozen reinventions of the same concept. So it's nice to have a standard, you know, couple of standard formats to use. Let me ask you this. Um, Arjan, your, your opinion was uh, was changed? Um, or you're, you were just taking the devil's advocate? My opinion was changed, yeah. I think um, what, I, what I said was that I still, I still see companies investing into Hadoop, even right now at, the, at this moment. Uh, but I must agree that Hadoop is dead and they will probably like Kieran already mentioned, they will uh, uh, do something with the investment, but they will kill it quickly, and that's it. Jinfa? I think it's dead. Pretty much so. I, I think one of the things that uh, um, when I spoke about metadata, you know, the, the inherent uh, you know, features of object storage is going to help standardize and simplify the entire implementation of data processing. Um. I think it's dying. It's uh, it isn't dead right now, um, but it is. It's on its way out. It's not got long to live, um, and we will we'll see that happen over the next couple of years. And maybe just put a put a spot positive spin on 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 the death of things and the the learning that we've we've got. Look at what's happening with say Splunk and the smart store architecture where that's a part of effectively a big data ecosystem that's now reinvented itself to be able to run in cloud scale environments. And it's, it's an interesting way to use object storage under the covers and the assumptions and sort of scale and value that comes with that. Um, look at Vertica and what they've done with their Eon mode implementation to build a massive scale data warehouse, same concept. So there's some trends in the core infrastructure architecture that sort of are effectively the lessons learned from the last 15 years that are now rolling into whole new, very high scale tools. Uh, and then the other piece of, I think what we've learned goes to what uh, Chin Fa is pointing out around metadata and watch for the next couple of years. I think there will be a, a real growth in data discovery tools because this idea that we're just gonna capture all this data with no context is clearly turning into a swamp and so there is a whole host of new tools emerging now for how do we create as teams doing data science or, or um, you know, data analytics, we need to create data products for our internal use. And there's a set of new tools that are gonna emerge around how to best uh, build those products even for our internal use. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you for listening to the On-Premise IT Roundtable. If you enjoyed this discussion, remember to subscribe, rate and review the show in iTunes since that really helps our visibility. And please share the show with your friends. This podcast is brought to you by GestaltIT.com, your home for IT coverage across the enterprise. For no show notes and more episodes, go to GestaltIT.com slash podcast.